Hey everybody, welcome back to my balcony. Today's thought, can thinking be something that you enjoy because you're good at it? In the same way that somebody might enjoy a physical activity, whether it's hiking, you know, mountain climbing, lifting, they enjoy it more and more as they get better and better at it. Or, you know, musicians or painters might really be able to master it to a point where they just totally get in the zone and they can be creative with it uh, and achieve what they might feel in the moment is some sort of perfection or something close to it. Um, they're able to actually utilize the activity itself um, in a way that is an outlet, you know, that, like uh, creating music. Um, I'm just wondering if people who think, uh, who think well, can also do that with thought. Is that why we have so many people who, for example, love theoretical physics or just love to learn? Um, this is a bit of a weird topic because it is a little bit more sciencey, but I actually I don't know the science behind this particular topic. So. Please, if you are a scientist in any of these realms, get on in here because I'd love to discuss this with you. Um, so my thought basically is that maybe just like there's a reward system for other things that are so important to our survival, um, if there's not maybe some sort of reward system to thinking as well, uh, simply because the better you are at thinking, uh, the more likely you're going to survive, right? The more you think, the more you live. Um, and I don't know exactly what the reward system is with music uh, or with like running, like why you get that euphoric feeling sometimes. But I certainly know that when it comes to things like eating, for example, you get the well done chemicals that course through you. And same with sex, right? Well done. So is it possible that when it comes to learning and really using your brain and thinking critically and trying to be imaginative and such, can you also get well done chemicals for that? I don't know. I think it would be super cool to be able to, number one, uh, harness critical thinking as a medium for getting in the zone for artistic expression and creativity. Um, well, maybe not artistic expression, but at least creativity, because creative thinking, like, it's so much fun. That's why I do these channels. Um, but it'd be really cool, too, to see if there was some sort of correlation between, you know, parts of the brain firing or certain chemicals being released, reward system style chemicals being released. Um, during critical thinking. Have any papers like that been done yet? Has any research been done? Have we looked at anyone before, after, and during critical thinking to see if any reward centers are lighting up or what kind of chemicals are released? So on the topic of chemicals in the brain and critical thinking, if we did manage to find some correlation between um, being in a state of critical thinking and imagination and certain chemicals being released. My next question then, question then is whether or not those chemicals are similar to any of the recreational drugs people take. Um, not necessarily because of the pleasure and reward systems, although that's totally understandable if, if we do it just because it feels good. Um, but for the people who take drugs recreationally in order to enlighten themselves, to gain new perspectives on, on life, the people who do it for the novelty and the learning, wouldn't it be interesting if there was some sort of similarity in the chemicals of recreational drugs and chemicals that we see in the brain during critical thinking. Because I wonder if we can find that critical thinking releases 
certain chemicals or correlates to certain chemicals in the brain, can it work the opposite way? Can putting those chemicals into the brain put the brain into a state of critical thinking? Um, and is that maybe why so many people have these enlightening moments and ideas and trips when they do certain drugs? Any expertise out there? Chime in. This is, this is a good one. <laughs>